Alright, so in this video we will take a closer look on the electronics of the tandem bike, not the solar trailer, that will be covered in another video. Uh, right now we will talk about what kind of motors we have, how we built them in, what kind of battery do we have, how we built that and all the other electronics on this bike. So let's start with the motors. We have two hub motors in both the front and the rear wheel um, and we did not choose a mid-drive for the reason that uh, we already have double the stress on the drivetrain than it was designed for because it's a tandem bike um, and we thought that if we were to add a mid-drive onto that and quadruple the, the force on the drivetrain it might not last as long or break frequently and so we choose hub motors and we choose not just one but two hub motors because when we are fully loaded this bike is really heavy um, and we designed this bike to carry us up high mountain roads and so we need a lot of power and a lot of torque um, and if we only had one motor it would overheat too quickly and so we have two motors. On the front we are using a Grin all axle hub motor which is a direct drive motor rather big. Um, we are using this not only because we think it's just a very good high quality motor um, and well designed but also because um, when we built this bike, this was the only motor that could fit our axle standard, which is a 20 mil through axle. Um, and that's why we choose this motor. On the rear, we are using an MXUS XF19, which is a geared motor, also in the, in the larger power region. Um, and we specifically choose not to have the same kind of motor in the front and the rear wheel uh, but we choose a geared hub motor in the rear and the direct drive motor in the front because we want it kind of best of both worlds because both options have their benefits and cons um, we wanted to have regenerative braking and so we choose the direct drive motor um, but the disadvantage of direct drive motors is that they have drag while riding because they have no clutch um, and so we choose the geared motor in the rear because we wanted to have the ability to ride this bike uh, when the sun is not shining um, and there shouldn't be too much drag like if we had two direct drive motors and also a geared motor is more efficient at lower RPMs so it's well better suited for climbing up steep hills so the geared motor is basically our hill climbing motor and the front motor is our always on motor used for everything on the flat on the still on the mountains it helps and when it goes downhill we use it as a regenerative brake which is triggered with this thumb throttle um, and one more thing about the throttle mapping about this bike as we have different kinds of motors where we choose to um, have a non-synchronous throttle mapping which means that the front motor is always on when we demand power but the rear motor only activates automatically when we demand a specific amount of torque um, and so the rear motor is only on when we accelerate or when we climb up hills okay um, Let's continue with the motor controllers. For the front motor, we are using a Grin Face Runner controller, um, which has done a good job so far. Um, as far as 
our experience goes, this is the most reliable controller that we had so far. Um, because before we used to have a VESC controller version 6 from Maytag, uh, which is supposed to be designed for FOC, but uh, they failed really quickly. We had two actually failing uh, for reasons that we do not understand, even though we already had some experience with desk controllers. Um, but we think that if you want to have features like regenerative braking, um, then you should invest in a higher quality motor controller and we are really happy to have this controller even though it's so expensive. Um, and we got a bit lucky because we got sponsored by a German company who sell these controllers. They're called e-bike solutions. Um, and that's how we got our hands onto this controller. For the rear, we are using a VESC controller, the hardware version 4, um, because it's not a direct drive motor and it's, it has no regenerative braking feature because it's a geared motor and so we had no problems whatsoever with this motor controller so far. Um, and we actually have it hooked up to a Bluetooth module, uh, which is super cool. We can we look up to, to we can watch real life data on the phone while riding and we can also uh, change every setting while riding uh, of for example the throttle mapping which we actually used a lot that feature um, so that's pretty cool mm. let's continue with this box here this is our electronics box all the electronics which are not outside and uh, should be sealed from the environment are here um, for example our power inverters we have a 12 volt inverter and a 5 volt inverter or multiple actually and the 12 volt system is for powering the horn let's turn the bike on so that I can show you we have a moped horn here uh, which is not just a gimmick but actually pretty useful in the um, th southern countries with a self-made switch um, the lights are also powered with 12 volt um, this is a pretty cool e-bike specific light uh, which actually has a high beam uh, which is controlled with this switch which is uh, really cool really useful and it's super bright and finally the we have lights on the rear brake lights for example normal bike lights and brake lights um, which are also powered with the 12 volt system and when I pull the brake lever the brake lights turn on automatically. There is a sensor at the brakes which senses if we pull the lever and then the brake lights turn on. Yeah, And the 5 volt system is used for all of our consumer electronics like phones uh, which we can charge on the phone mounts and we also have two USB ports on the rear uh, to charge our other devices like music box, um, headlights, camp lights, GoPro or power banks of uh, other cycle tourists who don't have electricity. <laughs> um, yeah, come over Benne. Now I will talk about some other things on this side uh, which is our on and off plug it's just an anti-spark plug uh, with which we turn on and off the bike uh, we used to have an anti-spark switch in there which was controlled with a button also from Maytag but sadly it also fried really quickly uh, maybe it's because we have two motor controllers and uh, too much 
um, capacitors there, so the current is too high and the MOSFETs burn through. We don't, we are not really sure why it burned, but um, now we have this and it's super reliable, super simple. Um, it works great. We also have a charge port here with which we can plug our battery charger in. So if there's uh, some rainy days, um, then we like to charge up the battery with a wall plug. And finally, there are two switches here, which I used for our push assist, um, which is controlled with the thumb throttle that controls the regen. Uh, but we somehow have to tell the motor controllers that now you should propel the bike and not break it uh, with the same signal and so these switches are for cutting off the signals of the regenerative brake um, and the ADC one the, is for the front motor we can turn that off um, if we only want the rear motor to assist us for the pushing um, because it's more efficient and you have more grip on the rear Okay, I think that's it for the electronics. Let's continue with the battery, which is in here. The battery is removable. Uh, you can see that if you go to the other side. Um, with these Velcro straps, you put them off and then you can push it out. Um, the capacity of the battery is about 1150 watt hours uh, but we are only using about 85% uh, of the capacity to uh, make it last longer because it's healthier for the battery cells. Um, usually the voltage limit for a single lithium ion cell is from 2.5 to 4.2 volts. Uh, about that but we are only going from 3.0 to 4.1 volts and that makes the battery last a lot longer and we can sacrifice some watt hours for that um, because the battery is rather big anyways and so we come out at about one kilowatt hour of capacity um, the cell configuration is 12 cells in series and 10 cells in parallel um, we are using Samsung ANR 18650-30Q cells, which we think are uh, fit our purpose here really well. They have enough discharge capability and charge capability without uh, getting hot. Uh, and they have a lot of capacity, so we are happy with that choice of cell. Um, there is a smart BMS in there so that we can monitor all the cells uh, with our phone. So our bike is <laughs> uh, smart. We have some Bluetooth modules in the uh, motor controller and the BMS as I already said. And we can also set things there which is also really useful. Um, and finally how we built this battery. We will show a picture of it of the inside here. Um, and we actually soldered the cells, even though this is a not recommended um, method, um, which makes sense because you should not. It's uh, it's not good if these cells get too hot if you uh, go with the soldering iron uh, on them. But we used a really big soldering iron so that we only had to touch it for a very short period of time. Um, and so we are pretty sure that we uh, did not damage the cells. Um, yeah, and so far everything's working pretty well with the cells, no issues with that. So we think it's fine that we soldered them. We tried to build our own spot weather uh, with an old car battery and a big solenoid, but it, that didn't work. Um, so we soldered them and we think it's okay. Yeah, so far so good. I think that's it for the electronics of the bike. Ah, no it's not. This is really important. Uh, this is the cycle analyst. Um, our 
bike computer, the brain of the bike, it senses all sorts of things. Um, and um, yeah, it, it tells the bike when it should give power and when not. Um, there are some sensors hooked up to it. Uh, for example, the pedal assist sensors, which are at the cranks, or the cadence sensors. Um, we built our own custom magnet ring here. Um, I will explain later why we did that, but first, why do we even have a pedal assist bike? Um, it's simply because we wanted to make this bike legal. Um, and in Europe, it's supposed to be a pedal assist and some other regulations. And also, it's nicer to not always uh, push a throttle when riding four hours a day uh, with the same speed. Okay, no, that's exaggerated, but it's uh, convenient. Um, and yeah, we have a two hall sensor um, cadence sensor here, so it knows the direction that we pedal, which is useful. Otherwise, if you only have one hall sensor um, in that in that cadence sensor, if you maneuver the bike and go backwards, the crank spin, and the bike thinks you want to accelerate, it gives throttle and goes away. It actually happened and it's not cool so uh, now we have the two hall sensors version there and that's working great. We have a second cadence sensor on the rear but that's just for redundancy. Um, yeah and some more information about the cycle analyst. Um, here we see all the information we need, um, the state of charge of the battery, uh, we see how much solar power is coming in, which is zero right now because we disconnected the solar panel, um, and uh, we see the speed, the power consumption of the motors, and um, we choose this special control um, computer and not just a cheap one. Uh, because um, it is super useful to have all this data and um, you can set so many things and uh, if you want to build such a complex bike with so many components that have to work together uh, somehow uh, it's pretty hard to not do it with such smart um, computer so we think that's a pretty good choice for our bike. Um, the pedal assist level is controlled with these buttons. The minus button is sadly broken right now, uh, but we've set it so that it cycles through all the pedal assist levels and so we can still ride the bike. Um, or set the pedal assist levels, we can ride it. <laughs> Anyways, this is a kill switch. It just makes the motors shut off. Um, and this is the switch for the lights. Good. That's it for the electronics of the tandem bike. In the next video, Benne will explain you how we built the trailer. So stay tuned for that and see you in the next video. Bye bye.